Asians like fair skin too. Texture, right? Right, but that's not that's not because they want to be white Europeans. <laughs> I don't want to be the white yeah. skin. I want to have the milky yeah. skin. Put the Hokkaido. I want the Hokkaido milk cream look. Type of colorism. Ah, David, the sun's shining on me. I don't want to get tan right now. Has intra-family colorism played a role in your life? This new study from London is causing people to talk about it. Yeah, this is going viral in several circles on the internet right now. Andrew, it is a study from the King's College in London where it said Asians with darker skin tones are more likely to experience bias even from within their own families. Mm. Um, somebody said, within families, children with light skin were often favored, while those with dark skin were stigmatized and subjected to insults and bullying. Oh, so uh, guys, yeah, I mean, this is a tough topic to talk about, but hopefully I think by us having a discussion, maybe you take something away from it and maybe it helps you think about it because again, I know skin color, skin tone, colorism, racism, whatever. There, it's, there's there's a, all these different dynamics that are going on in the world. And I would say that this study, although it's not shocking to a lot of people, it kind of confirms what people already believe. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. We're gonna try our best to give a very good analysis, a productive conversation. Like I said, these things are difficult to talk about. It had included a quote, Andrew, from a 31-year-old Pakistani woman who said, um, her mom would say, how much? How come your sister is so much lighter than you? How come you're so much darker than your sister, huh? You didn't wash properly? Ooh. Yeah, I, first of all, I think any family that does this to their kids is wrong, and I think it's toxic. But I do think, I guess the study, it, it, it only pulled 33 people, and then most of them were South Asian. So I think maybe the dynamics in within South Indians, or a Indian, sorry, is a little bit different than like even other Asians. But I don't want to say it doesn't happen amongst other Asians. It no, absolutely for sure. Does. I think that that's why it went so viral. Is the, even though that the sample size was just 33 people, I guess the findings... Like you said, they go along with what people already believe to be true. But I will say this. I think it varies a lot family to family, right? And right. what are the factors that impact it? I mean, family to family, what... Uh kind of how classes is that family, even the world that that family operates in or the jobs or the careers and the community that that family's in. If your mom is like Michelle Yeoh's character in CRA, I'm not saying Michelle Yeoh herself personally, I mean, she was probably colorist. She, they didn't bring it up in the movie, but I would assume a mom that's like that is. Somebody says it also matters what subculture and worlds you operate in, mm -hmm. right? For sure, it matters. And ultimately, your mileage may vary. Um, like we said, Andrew, me and you personally within our own family, even though there are different shades, even our parents are different shades of colors, mm -hmm. there was not this dynamic. No, like, we, I, we didn't talk about yeah. it. They didn't talk about it at home. Like, even if we got tan, we were out doing yard work with our dad. Mom never complained. Like, oh, why are you guys getting so dark? You need to put on sunscreen. No. She was, we just rocked the tan line. So I think shout out to our parents and shout out to any parents out there who never judged people outwardly on that type of thing. And I think that's very important. It does trickle down to the kid. But even though we did not have it within our nuclear family unit, Andrew, did we observe it within any sort of systems that we were raised in? Sure, you know, I mean, on church, on Sundays, we would go to church and that would be a lot of different types of Chinese people. And, and Chinese people, if you guys know, even though most people think they're just like one thing, it's 1.4 billion people. So there actually yeah. is a gigantic spectrum. I mean, right off the bat, listen, the Southern Chinese generally a little bit more tan than the Northern Chinese or the Taiwanese people at our church growing up, right? And there was a girl who was half Chinese and half Filipino, but she was raised by her mom. That was on the Chinese side. And um, I, we all, everybody at you, church, like you thought they, she was cute. Yeah, everybody thought she was good looking. Yeah. But I noticed some of the more traditional minded East Asian guys did not like her because of colorism or, well, or I guess I, the, the feature set or the skin tone. Yeah, but me and you, obviously we were hanging out with a lot of Vietnamese, Filipino, Cambodian people. We we're going to hot import nights, yeah. looking at different looks and stuff like that. Yeah. But, but for some people, they were not open-minded to right. that look. They only wanted J-A, uh, not, well, I was going to say J-A-V, but I was like saying for sure, J-A-V, J-pop, anime looks. Nah, that girl looked like A-A-B-G. That's what I grew up being attracted to. But yeah, I do want to talk about before we get into the comment section is like, that how colorism in a homogenous East Asian society like Korea or China or Japan, it is different, even though there is a skin tone thing there going on, it's different than in the colonized countries like possibly like India, the Philippines, and obviously Latin America. It is, it is, it is because they actually they actually have an aristocratic class that is mixed, right. that is And, and I wanna make that right distinction now. and we're gonna dive into it, but still colorism nonetheless, but I think the reasonings are very different. Um, so also, I remember, Andrew, it depends on what worlds you're in because I remember when we were break dancing, when we were uh, hip hop choreo, if you're in basketball, battle rap, more like, I guess, urban hip hop subcultures, I would say being a light-skinned, chinky Asian was not good. 
Oh. You could argue that it was like, I remember some of the Filipino girls, they're like, ah, it's a little chinky for me to look. That's not, yeah, not no, no, no. I mean, definitely in those worlds, being kind of like a lighter skinned East Asian person, it, it was not helping you. Yeah, so it matters. Um, but of course, everybody's going off a societal macro, almost like ancient thing right now. Let's get into the comment section, Andrew. Somebody said, it seems that way everywhere in the world. It's not just their sample size. Yeah. It's, this exists in many different regions. Even in Europe, the Scandinavians and Anglo-Saxons are viewed differently than the Iberian Peninsula Mediterranean whites. Yeah, I mean, I guess even within white people, they kind of do discriminate against gingers, redheads, right? Like a Ooh, little bit. That's even, that's inter-UK. Yeah, that's, in, that's intra-white. Guys, and also I do want to note that, yeah, most people agree that colorism is the most extreme in places that were colonized by Europeans but that are not natively European. Right. I think that if you come from a colonized place, I, I understand there's different levels of colonization. It would be more of a Western style of colorism where, like we said, there's still colorism in a place like South Korea, right? But it's not the same type of colorism. Ah, David, the sun's shining on me. I don't want to get tan right now. Somebody said, uh, this is another internet comment. Hey guys, don't overread into skin color. Skin color may be a factor into lookism within certain places, but there's a lot of other stuff that you're not considering, whether it's religion, income class, education class, ancient tribal rankings of where you fit in a dynastic or imperial like king system. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people like to point out, oh, well, if a white guy's a millionaire and a black guy's a millionaire, then, you know, color isn't going to matter. Race isn't going to matter to them. Yeah, I mean, I do think it's also an economic class thing, you know, like, and if you are coming from a, a, a comparable class and even if you're a little tanner skin, I don't think people even think about it. But I much. think it varies. I think some places they would go off the color of the skin and other places they would go off the other stats. Those parts we call racist. <laughs> um, so how different is it like in the places that have been colonized? For example, everybody points out Latin America the most. There was a ton of anecdotes in the comment section from Latin America, but to a lesser extent, uh, the Philippines and even to a lesser extent, India. Yeah, I mean, I think that those places, of course, because they have like a whole class of person that is part European, and generally that class of people is considered higher class or richer or they happen to be richer right. or their lineage is richer right. or whatever Whether they is. dominate economics or politics or media or yeah, whatever. Yeah, well, right? because if they're the colonizers, if they're at all a blood, uh, a descendant of the colonizers, then they usually are put in a better position to succeed More in elevated country. pedestal immediately, right? right? Whether, whether just off look or maybe even their family dynamics are more powerful. But I think it is important to note that let's just use like China, for example, that colorism in China is not based on off of like colonization from Europeans, right? And a lot of people like to point out like, oh, Asians like fair skin too. Asians like fair skin too. Right, look at the K-pop stars, like very milky, snowy texture, right? Right, but that's not, that's not because they wanna be white Europeans. So right. that's why I would say it's not so much a whiter skin thing, it's a lighter skin thing, but it's not because they want to be European. They just like that soft, milky, snowy white skin with the right. dark black hair. And, and that may have been related to working in the fields or the type of industries and jobs that were available even just like 100 years ago. Like obviously jobs in the past 50, 60, 70 years yeah. have dramatically changed I mean, since 100 years ago. Think about the makeup that like geishas wear or like the Chinese opera wears. Like if, when they put on the white face, they're not trying to play Europeans. They're just saying like, you know, this is why the high class people do it. They don't stand out right, in the sun. Right. But it gets confusing because when people say white skin, they're thinking about like a white Anglo-Saxon European, obviously the most dominant group, I guess, globally the last couple hundred years. Exactly. Whereas really they, they use milky and snowy a lot. That's, those are the words I hear translated. Yeah, yeah, in. I want to I wanna have the, <laughs> I don't want to be the white yeah. skin. I want to have the milky yeah. skin. Put the Hokkaido. I want the Hokkaido milk cream look. Um, how was it in colonized countries, Andrew? There was a lot of comments you know, from various platforms talking about, I guess, Mexico. Because in Mexico specifically yeah. is the easiest use case to see intra-family colorism. I'm not saying all, by the way, I'm just going off the comment section because 60% of Mexico is mixed, mestizo, but they said uh, about 20 to 30% is white European mm -hmm. looking in Mexico and 10% is very Mayan or uh, uh, Aztec and indigenous looking. I don't know. Maybe there's something that unites Mexicans, man. They just, they just like to hang out with each other and just chill and crack a beer open. So I don't know. They must but have I like do a think, culture. I did hear that they do have some discrimination that they have within their world. Because if you look at the Mexican entertainment industry, Andrew, it is more of the European looking ones. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And, or, and same with the Philippines. The Philippines, the people who's elevated in the media is like usually a half or a quarter European. 
Yes. Uh, but I mean, I think that what I think how you have to look at things is how differently are the tanner, darker skinned people treated in that country and how many laws were set up to hold those people back? Because in America, the 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 racist laws, they were very specific. Yeah, They're because specific. America's so mixed, they had they had all these definitions, they, right? They put a hard no on certain people. So I'm saying, I guess in those countries, I'd like to know like what the laws were against mixing and, and how people are treated. Obviously, I understand that tanner skin people are generally sometimes treated differently. Yeah. You know, that's Interestingly yeah. enough, Andrew, even historically in America, I would say that Chinese were ha, got viewed with a no by those laws, and Japanese were almost like a half yes. If you look historically, guys... I'm not talking, yeah, I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, no, I'm, they have the internment too, but I'm just saying, um, as somebody said in Mexico, they have words such as um, Castizo Mexicano. In the Philippines, they have a word called Mestiza. And in India, they have Anglo Indian. Mm. And those are to indicate the people who are mixed with Yeah, European. I mean, you guys know that like, Within China, we don't really have a term called like Anglo Chinese. Right. <laughs> That's not a term we have. Like, uh, maybe in like, I guess, maybe Hong Kong, Malaysia, Singapore, a little bit oh, more. Oh, like colonies. in Hong Kong, maybe. A little yeah, bit, a little a bit, but it's very, it's very seldom. Um, interestingly enough, Andrew, people said in Europe, the Scandinavians and the Anglos are viewed as more rich and prosperous than Mediterranean Europeans. However, especially the Mediterranean men, but even the women are viewed as better looking. Yeah. And I, th I thought this one uh, comment was really interesting. Said, yeah, it's a proven fact. No way. So why, why do light-skinned people want to get tan, though? And why do they age so badly? Yeah, I do think it's interesting. I guess That's people, like a stylistic people thing. want things that they don't have, right? Or they, they, they're like, oh, like, let's just say there's a, 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 it's like so weird to say this, but like, yeah, let's just say there's an Anglo-Saxon person, but they're like, they're like, what am I missing? I have the rich and the prosperous face, but they don't look cool. I don't look, I can look like I can salsa very well. Where well, that's where I wish I had the look of an Italian man. Yeah, I mean, I would say some white people are so pale, they just look cold. Right. They just look like they're- Are you talking just, about the Chase Budinger where they got the blonde eyebrows Yeah, too, they, right? they literally do look like they've been in an ice bath like since they were born. Somebody said, of course, it's different family to family, but growing up, my grandma always said these mean colorist things to me because I was darker than my brothers, sisters, and cousins. Yo, and then you people know had all the, 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 the examples. You know what's funny, and this is kind of messed up though, I think a lot of moms and some- side about the mom side of the family is always the most like black pill like about like looks. look lookism yeah like the dads don't really care because dads are just like i don't know just do good work and just be a man and just be productive i don't want to think about this cosmetic stuff but then women generally think about cosmetics more yeah. and they're well but i think to be honest in global society anywhere women's like looks is i guess impacts their life more than the looks of a man i guess that makes sense yeah um somebody said is this why asian girls like marrying white guys so much hmm? i don't know i don't i don't know yeah um somebody oh. said well to be honest in the future environments that are probably likely to occur on earth melanin will be a huge advantage to prevent cancer also in space exploration and because it also has more elasticity scientifically speaking hey that's a case for the tanner skin darker skin um, this is, these are more personal comments. Like I said, we cannot get to all of them, guys. Like I said, do not get offended. These are not my comments. I'm just analyzing other people's comments. Somebody said, I'm Cantonese. I was speaking Canto to another Canto lady, and she said, I don't look Canto. I took it as a compliment. Mm. Interesting, right? This has to, let's be honest, Andrew, if we're going to get deep cut here, it has to do with like how different groups, and this is sort of an intra-family thing, but it, it's just a larger dynamic. Different groups view themselves with different self-images. Right. Yeah. So, so for, for sure. example, like I noticed my Korean friends where like there's three siblings and one of them doesn't look Korean. That person feels bad, right? Because they're like, oh, I don't look Korean because Koreans are, uh, they're like have that image of being good looking, right? Yeah. Whereas this guy saying, oh, I'm Kanto, but I got identified as not Kanto. And that made me maybe feel like, ooh, maybe I look Korean. Yeah, I'm you elevated. Know, you know what's messed up is like a lot of people don't even feel like certain groups of people can have good looking people because they feel like, oh, well, if you're good looking from that group, you must be something else. I hate that. Yeah, Anyways. and I just, honestly, it, it, sometimes it, it happens. happens for Canto people. Um, I'd say this: does it does it remind you of an Irish guy? He's still proud of being Irish. He likes the kilts. He likes haggis, even. But at the end of the day, if he wants to be viewed as more sexually in a global way, he's like, maybe I did wish I looked, you know, more like, uh, you know, like a Jay olive Balvin. Skin. Yeah, olive skin guy. Yeah, I don't know. I mean. Possibly. I Do don't... you think it's true? There's another comment, Andrew. In the Asian world, they're like, man. You're not just judged on skin color and lookism. It's also how short you are, how fat you are, or how ugly you are. I, I mean, I think your aesthetics and your appearance always play, and there's multiple factors. That's why I would like to think that 
in the modern day with most people, it's not just about like if you're tan skin or darker skin. It's yeah. more about Because you could like, be a super good looking dark skin. Yeah, yeah, I think there's enough like good looking people of every color and every like ethnicity that like people have seen now. But it's just, maybe it's a more good looking thing now. Yeah, I, I definitely know. think amongst the older generation, Andrew. Um, do you agree that for the older generations in Asia, they pretty much go off height, look, and probably skin tone does play into look. Thinness, education, and money. This guy said that it seems like humor, good works in society, sports, and other intangible skills such as vibes do not really up your status to the older generation. I mean, you're just talking about personality because the older generation was coming from a time where your economic status meant so much. That meant if you were going to come to America or not or that meant if you were going to live a good life or not now obviously right. they did not, not pick people based on vibes yeah right. now that we're all in America and everybody kind of you generally know how to live at least a middle level like middle class lifestyle like yeah it's it's more about maybe your vibe I do disagree with that though I always noticed that at church I know our family was not like that but some of the families the man like I said there was a pretty big variance in church Very some of them it was like if you wasn't the tallest best looking biggest sharpest nose kid in the family it's like you get like a second tier status. Yeah, some of those tall, good looking guys are boring. Bland ass personality. Blandy Melandy. Act like it's 1935 ish. Um, Andrew, let's get into our takeaways. Like I said, there was like so many comments from so many different platforms. Mm -hmm. I could not possibly get to them all. Um, what do you think? How do people lean away from colorism? And obviously, like we said, there's different types of colorism. There's intra-racial, which is like two different ethnicities. There's ones that are regional within a country, and there's ones even within a family. But obviously, the King's College London study was talking about it in the most micro-nuclear family way. Yeah, I do think it's hard to change your family, but it's just growing up and opening yourself up to kind of like products or cultures from people who look differently. And I hope that's what families can do, you know? Like, even just like, for us eating food going to different restaurants like there obviously are groups of people that have darker skin jamaican people i mean like nigerian food or even filipino food or indonesian food these are all skin to vietnamese food cambodian food these are all foods indian food right like you can just go into these restaurants and just connect with the people and enjoy something from them and that's going to help that family open up obviously if your family is super super racist I don't know what to tell you. It's very hard for me to have a solution for you. Yeah. You just got to get away from them at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's one thing that you can ask of your family. You know, for sure. How do you determine between preferences and racism? Because obviously some people that are older, let's just say the colorist people in your family, intra family, they would defend themselves being like, it is just a preference. Okay. It's not like a racism. Yeah, preference. There's a thin line between preference and discrimination and then discrimination to racism. Right. These are all steps. And it has to do with, uh, I guess, extensive extremity and applicability and uh, right. IRL and, situations. And preferences, depending on how specific they are, they can sound kind of... Uh, discriminatory, but I guess it just depends on the person. So it's case by case. I noticed that one major thing for myself was listening to a lot of different genres of music. Like you said earlier, Andrew, eating different genres of food, mm -hmm. like authentic versions, not the gentrified version. Listening to like hip hop. Of course, um, hip hop is like so cool because and basketball as well, because you can be a fan of Luka and Jokic. You can be a fan of LeBron. You can be a fan of Jose Alvarado, Yao Ming, mm -hmm. Jeremy Lin, Eduardo Nahara. There's like yeah. a huge spectrum within basketball, right? Yeah. What, what would you say to kind of wrap this up? Like as far as people, because I think there is some feeling like, listen, if you're, if you're like, uh, you're very tuned into this and you know you have darker skin and you feel like, oh man, like people are going to always judge me or all the old traditional people will at least. Like, how do I live like a good life, you know? I think the key is that there's so many levels of your life. There's your micro life that you're born into, right? Uh, but there's also little elements in the micro you can shift. There's your mid, which is your neighborhood and the city, you know, your locality. Let's say the closest 500 to 5,000 people. And then there's the globe. Like statistically, guys, there's 8 billion people on the globe. I believe it's 7.9 billion. So what levels are you like looking at? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's like every level is completely different and we all live in different fishbowls. Some people live very big mm. ranging lives. Some people live very hyper fishbowl lives yeah and i think if you're around a family or a group of people that are very much judging you on that constantly uh and you feel uncomfortable i mean i don't you, get away yeah that's wrong it's honestly wrong it's outdated um people should be judged on because they're not going to empower you yeah. if you buy into their validation and their Dude. like societal skeletal metrics people should be based on what they can provide how they behave 
their personality, all these other things, uh, you know, are, are so much more valuable. But anyways, guys, uh, I don't know if we sound like a broken record. Um, colorism is bad. Like, I think it's pretty clear, but it still happens. So I think hopefully this conversation was helpful in some way. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe we didn't, I don't have the end all be all solutions for everybody, right. but just hopefully it was just good to get it out and talk about. I know yeah. that's a hard time. And I know that it's interesting, Andrew, because some people view colorism as such an A tier embedded issue. They don't want to talk about it because they feel like it's a given. And other people view it as a C or D tier issue where they're like, yeah, it's a thing, but it's such a light thing. Let's not talk about it. Right. So why do you think there's like some people are considering it an A issue and a C issue, but both of them are not trying to talk about it. Yeah, and I, I think know. talking about it in a productive way can help the few. Like maybe other people are like, oh, I don't need to talk about it. It's so simple to me. But other people are like, I really needed this. Yeah, I think in 2023, it's not probably the number one thing. I think there's probably other factors that I think are will more change how people perceive you, but it is it is definitely a factor, 100%. And like factor. we said, guys, it depends on your family and the worlds you're in and what systems you buy into. All I can tell people is go out there, see different reps, look at what's empowering to you, right. and man, I just hope everybody has a successful, happy life. Um, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Keep it civil. Like we said, guys, we're tackling the tough topics. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.